Nvidia just launched their new GTX 1650 graphics card, but how well does it compare with the older GTX 1050 Ti? In this video, we'll test out and compare 18 different games at 1080p and 1440p resolutions to help you see the performance difference between them, followed by a discussion on value and if it's worth it. Let's quickly take a look at how the newer GTX 1650 and older GTX 1050 Ti actually differ in terms of specs. Note that these are the base model specs, different cards will vary slightly. The 1650 has 16% more CUDA cores and is based on Nvidia's newer Turing architecture. The 1650 also has higher base and boost clock speeds. And while both have 4GB of GDDR5 memory, the 1650's appears to be a little faster. For the testing, I'm using the Gigabyte GTX 1650OC and the MSI GTX 1050Ti Gaming X. So both have a little factory overclock, expect slightly different results with different models. The system that I'm testing with has an Intel i7-8700K CPU overclocked to 5.0GHz in an MSI Z390 ACE motherboard, along with 16GB of TeForce Nighthawk CL16 memory from Team Group running at DDR4-3200 in dual channel. Check the links in the description for details on all of the components as well as for up to date pricing. The same Windows updates, game updates and Nvidia driver 430.39 were used for the testing, so let's get into the results. Let's start out with Apex Legends, which was tested with all settings maxed out. I've tested with higher settings in the upcoming games than I'd actually play with in most cases, as that's better for GPU comparison purposes. In all upcoming graphs, I've got the GTX 1650 shown by the top bar in red, while the older GTX 1050 Ti is shown below in purple. In terms of average FPS, the 1650 was 32% of the 1050 Ti at 1080p, rising up to a 37% improvement at 1440p. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built-in benchmark using high settings, and as expected, the 1650 was ahead here, performing 30% better at 1080p over the 1050 Ti, then slightly higher at 32% at 1440p, while the 1% 1 lows from the 1650 were above the averages from the 1050 Ti. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode rather than multiplayer, as it's easier to consistently reproduce the test run. At 1080p, the 1650 was 27% ahead of the 1050 Ti here, rising to 31% at 1440p. Due to the high 1% low, I think you could actually get away with the 1650 at 1440p, though maybe turn the settings down to medium. Far Cry New Dawn was tested using the built-in benchmark with high settings, and was another game where even the 1% lows from the 1650 were ahead of the averages from the 1050 Ti. At both 1080p and 1440p, the 1650 was 25% ahead of the 1050 Ti in this test. Far Cry 5 was also tested with the built-in benchmark with high settings, and this game was seeing higher FPS over the newer Far Cry New Dawn just shown. For average frame rate, there was a 24% boost at both 1080p and 1440p with the 1650. Fortnite was tested using the replay feature, with the exact same replay on both graphics cards. The 1050 Ti was still able to reach 60fps averages at 1080p even with epic settings in use. However the 1650 was 20.5% ahead here, lowering to a 13.7% lead at 1440p. Metro Exodus was tested with the built-in benchmark at high settings. The actual game performs a fair bit ahead of this, so this is more of a synthetic test rather than representative of actual gameplay, but it does allow me to accurately compare between the two graphics cards. With that in mind, the 1650 was 30% ahead of the 1050 Ti at 1080p, and 28% ahead at 1440p. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested using the built-in benchmark with high settings. This seems to be more of a graphically intensive test, as out of all games tested, it saw the largest improvement at 1440p of 41.6%, and third largest improvement at 1080p out of all 18 games tested, with 34% higher average FPS over the 1050 Ti. Rainbow Six Siege was tested using the built-in benchmark at high settings. This is a game that I've found to perform better with Nvidia's new Turing architecture, and it was seeing quite a nice improvement with the 1650, with 33.5% higher average FPS over the 1050 Ti at 1080p, and a 35% boost at 1440p. CSGO was tested with the Uletical FPS benchmark, and both cards were capable of providing very high frame rates in this test. Granted the 8700K is of course contributing a lot here too. This game saw one of the smallest differences between the two graphics cards, with just an 11.5% improvement at 1080p with the 1650, and a 10.6% improvement at 1440p. Overwatch was tested in the practice range, as I can easily perform the same test run compared to playing with bots or other players which will differ every time. 
While both were giving fairly good frame rates, considering the highest epic setting preset was in use, even at 1440p, like CSGO, there was less of a difference between the two. At 1080p, we're looking at a 13% improvement with the 1650, lowering to 10% faster at 1440p. PUBG was tested using the replay feature, with the exact same replay at high settings. And the 1650 was needed to hit the 60fps sweet spot at 1080p here. In terms of differences, the 1650 was reaching 30.7% higher average FPS than the 1050 Ti at 1080p, and 34.7% higher at 1440p. The 1650 was also giving massive improvements to 1% low too, with a 44% increase at 1080p and 37% at 1440p. Watch Dogs 2 is a resource intensive game, and was tested with very high settings. In my opinion, this one doesn't need a high frame rate to play. I can get by with a solid 30 FPS, so I wouldn't want to use 1440p here, though it would probably be fine with high or lower settings. Anyway, in terms of differences, the 1% lows from the 1650 were again above the averages provided by the 1050 Ti. While at 1080p, the 1650 was 18% ahead of the 1050 Ti in average FPS, and 16.7% ahead at 1440p. Ghost Recon was tested with the built-in benchmark and high settings in use and is another resource heavy game. At 1080p, the 1650 was 23.6% ahead of the 1050 Ti in average FPS, lowering to a 17.5% lead at 1440p. The Witcher 3 was tested with hairworks disabled. At 1080p, the 1650 was achieving 25% higher average frame rates over the 1050 Ti, lowering again to 22% at 1440p. Although at 1440p, there was a much larger 59% boost to 1% low. Strange Brigade was tested with the built-in benchmark using Vulkan with async compute enabled maxed out at ultra settings. At 1080p, the 1650 was seeing its largest improvement out of all 18 games tested, with a 37% higher average FPS over the 1050 Ti, and also a 37% improvement at 1440p, coming in at second place out of all 18 in this resolution. Doom was also tested using Vulkan, and there was quite a big difference in this game too. At 1080p, the 1650 was 31% ahead of the 1050 Ti, rising up to a 36% boost at 1440p, while the 1% 1 lows from the 1650 were above the averages from the 1050 Ti. Shadow of War was tested with the built-in benchmark, and like Rainbow Six Siege, is another game I've found to benefit from Nvidia's Turing architecture. At 1080p, it came in at second place with a 34% higher average FPS over the 1050 Ti, and 35% higher at 1440p. In terms of overall improvement, over all 18 games tested with a 1080p resolution, on average the GTX 1650 was performing 26.7% better when compared to the GTX 1050 Ti in terms of average FPS. As we can see, it really depends on the specific game. Esports titles like CSGO, Overwatch and Fortnite for example were closer to the bottom. At 1440p, on average over the same 18 games, the GTX 1650 was now scoring just a little higher on average compared to the 1080p results just shown, now with 27.1% higher average FPS. Again, there's no major difference to those esports titles down the bottom of the graph, while more GPU demanding games were seeing larger improvements. It's worth noting though that I don't consider either of these 1440p capable cards in the majority of games tested. I just wanted to see how the resolution would affect the percentage difference, as it should be more GPU intensive when compared with 1080p. Here's what we're looking at in terms of synthetic benchmarks. I've tested 3D Mark's Firestrike, TimeSpy, and VR Mark here. I'll note that in TimeSpy with the 1650, I did have some black screen flickering, which some others have reported, so I'm not 100% certain whether that affected results. As for the differences in total system power draw, the 1650 was only slightly ahead. So it is at least good to see that not that much extra power is required here for a fair boost in performance. Now let's look at one of the main reasons I was interested in making this video. I saw Nvidia tweet this image the other day showing the performance boosts to expect from their 1650 graphics. And rather than take them at face value, I wanted to see if I could work out just how accurate and honest they're being. In typical Nvidia fashion, they're not providing the exact frame rates, so we're not off to a good start. But we can extrapolate the information to get a rough idea. They do note that they're using an 8700K system with 16GB of memory at 1080p, and while no exact speeds are given, that's quite similar to my setup. So how did my results compare to Nvidia's claims? PUBG seems pretty easy to work out. 60fps at 1080p in their 1650 test, and it looks like around 46 or 47fps for the 1050Ti, just 2-3fps below my results. That would mean Nvidia are claiming a 30.4% performance increase. 
And well, as we saw, I was seeing almost a 31% boost, so that's looking about right. In Fortnite, as best I can tell here, Nvidia are showing 59 FPS with the 1050 Ti and 74 FPS with the 1650, again fairly close to my results, though resulting in a 25% improvement with the 1650, which is a little above my 20.5% difference. Rainbow Six Siege on the other hand, I feel is a bit of a best case result though. I've noted in many comparisons that the game seems to perform noticeably better with Nvidia's new Turing cards over Pascal. In any case though, I wasn't quite seeing the big difference they've got here. Looks like the 1050 Ti is around maybe 45 FPS, about in the center of the 30 and 60 FPS points, while the 1650 appears to be around 70 FPS, which gives it a massive 59% improvement if I'm right. At 1080p, I saw a 33.5% increase with the 1650, however I was using the built-in benchmark. Steve at Hardware Unboxed tests this game in actual gameplay, and even if we use his numbers, there was a 46% difference. So I'm not too sure how Nvidia got that one. I presume different parts of the game would give different results. Though even in all of my 18 game tests, I was nowhere near as close to a 59% improvement on the 1650. Apex is a bit easy to work out. The results are the same as what they had for PUBG. So around 46 or 47 FPS most likely, with 60 FPS for the 1650. Fairly close to my own results, and again around a 30% improvement. Once more, close to the 31.8% improvement I was seeing. It looks like Nvidia are at least being honest here and not providing super skewed results for the most part, though Rainbow Six was a bit iffy. Now let's start talking about price and value. I suggest checking updated prices using the links in the description, as prices will change over time. The 1650 just launched at 149 US dollars, and can currently be bought for that price on the low end while the 1050 Ti, which came out around two and a half years ago in October 2016, had an MSRP of $139. However, today it's going for closer to the 180 US dollar mark on the lower side. At first glance, you'd think Nvidia has put out a card that's cheaper than what the 1050 Ti is currently available for while also performing better. Everyone's a winner, right? If we lived in an Nvidia-only world, maybe. However, that's simply not the case. The fact is, AMD are offering the RX 570 for less than the GTX 1650, around 130 US dollars new. And the 570 performs better as well, it's much better value. This is before we even consider that it's been out for two years already, so you could probably pick one up cheaper on the secondhand market. While I'm not explicitly comparing to the 570 in this video, it would have been a crime to not mention this. And don't worry, I will be comparing the 570 against the 1650 in an upcoming video. I just wanted to show the differences between the 1050 Ti and 1650 here, as I saw a lot of people who were curious in the differences. In isolation, the 1650 does look like a fair improvement over the 1050 Ti, which is exactly how Nvidia seemed to be marketing it. But once you take into account options from AMD, it's not great at all. If you were buying today, let me know which card you'd pick down in the comments and why. The newer GTX 1650 or older GTX 1050 Ti. And if either of these, why not the RX 570? I'd be interested in hearing what you're picking and why. And if you're new to the channel, get subscribed for future comparisons and tech videos like this one.